Hey, how you doing guys? Uh, for this week's topic, um, I'm going to be talking about the reason why Apple's not concentrating on the professional market, and in the long run, run it won't really matter. Um, at least uh, for, for Apple themselves. Now, of course, um, they made some big changes, especially in their Mac Pro workstations. Uh, totally new architecture with the 2013 Mac Pro. One of which I do have myself. I also have a, a, cl a couple of classic Mac Pros as well. Uh, they also transitioned. They did a new rewrite of Final Cut Pro from uh, Final Cut Pro 7 to Final Cut Pro 10. And that did kind of alienate a lot of the professionals that rely on it for a living. Because then they'd perhaps have to learn new software and a lot of unknowns, which they weren't happy about. But there is... A very interesting article. Uh, oh, actually, let me tell you before I go to the article is I said myself it really wouldn't matter in the long run because, um, like I said, they're not uh, uh, focusing on the professional. They're focusing on the prosumer and the people who are going to be the up and coming professional could be power users, enthusiasts and so on. That's who they're focusing on. And which are going to transition to the uh, pro uh, market. And there's actually a news article from uh, Red Shark um, that I'm going to show you real quick. And the author on this is um, Clayton Moore that basically says um, Apple could dominate the entire NLE space with the next Final Cut Pro. And uh, I think he's actually talking about the new newest version that they have out right now, I think, uh, anyway. So, and what he says is basically uh, the new Final Cut Pro 10 is not designed for today's Pro. They're designed for consumers. And uh, because that's uh, originally how they start out. Pros just don't become pros right off the bat. They normally start out as consumers, uh, then enthusiasts and um, power users, then finally into the professional realm. So Apple's just going to start at the consumer level to begin with. And they do this um, by using iMovie on their iOS platform, iMovie on Macs. Uh, now, I know I'm, iMovie is free on most Macs nowadays. And... Uh, so pe people tend to stick with wh what they already know. So um, it already comes free. And so they, they're going to tend to use that first. And people also tend to use uh, default applications already installed on their devices. Um, another thing is uh, Apple has the advantage over other pro applications. I'm talking about Adobe's... Um, uh, Premiere Pro, I'm talking, um, it could be uh, DaVinci Resolve now that has editing functions and so on, is Apple has their own platform to install these upon. Um, so obviously the other, you know, um, com uh, competitors can't do this. Now, way back when, yes, before they used to have these big editing appliances, you, you, which were basically integrated software and hardware um, now, which pretty much went away. You can still find them out there um, because it was far more cheaper to get a personal computer and then install the application upon that, saving thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, so Apple has advantage of putting on their platform, um, some of which is free. Depending, uh, I don't know if they you can get iMovie for free on touch devices or not. Um, I think it's you have to pay for it on the touch devices. Um, but I believe it does come free on the most part on most Macs nowadays. Um, of course, um, another problem um, that uh, some of the competitors have, I'm just going to be talking about uh, Adobe's Premiere Pro, is um, with Final Cut Pro 10. They they totally rewritten it from scratch. Um, there's a uh, both uh, you know negative aspects and positive aspects to that. Some of the negative aspects they alienated their pro users because then they'd have to relearn the software possibly, 
Um, a lot of unknowns. Uh, ten, professionals tend not to like big changes right away because they don't know what the future is going to hold and so on. Um, now, one of the big advantages to this is now um, that software can be take full advantage of the hardware and since uh, Apple is totally in the operating system and hardware integration anyway this is perfect for them and it tends to be much much faster over something like Premiere Pro. Now Premiere Pro decided or Adobe decided to go a different route. Um, a total rewrite could possibly alienate their current users and you know, so you, you got to pick one or the other. Um, I think Apple decided just to rip off the Band-Aid right now, focus on the consumer. And now, of course, it's it's probably had as many as um, 9 to 15 different upgrades, which now it's super usable right now. While um, some of the other older ones, uh, given like, of course, I said Adobe's Premiere Pro, are getting kind of long in the tooth. They are slower. They're not fully optimized. And um, checking out some of the speed, um, Final Cut Pro 10 is actually, on the most part, four times as fast as Adobe uh, Premiere Pro and uh, Encoder uh, versus, you know, Apple's offerings because just for those reasons, a total rewrite. Um, so... Adobe has to go, you know, slow upgrades here and there, and then you, then they have to submit bug fixes and so on. So it's a uh, lot longer transition. So um, that's my uh, that's why I think Apple changed focus from the professional to the consumer rather than the other way around. And uh, of course, um, a lot of people aren't happy with it, but. You know, it, it is what it is. Uh, give me your thoughts um, on that, and I'll probably have a lot of pros um, put a lot of comments on this video, uh, considering uh, they weren't happy with with happy with that. But um, those are my reasons why, and this article kind of shows, even goes more into it. So I thought it was a very interesting topic for, uh, for this week. So thanks.